All right, hey everyone, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. Welcome back to the series of videos on how to rough in for electricians. Again, you guys can check out the YouTube playlist to watch all these videos, or you guys can just uh, subscribe on the website by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. You will not miss an article or a video, and you can get my free book for apprentice electricians. Before we talk about drilling and what to think about when it comes to drilling, uh, I found these other single gang boxes. So this one is a, called a vapor barrier box. So back in the day, if you were on an outside wall, because I didn't talk about that when it comes to boxing, outside walls need to have a vapor barrier. And many uh, back in the day, there would be special vapor boots that we, that we would actually put over each box before we screw it in. Nowadays, this is like the new vapor box, which is awesome because you just literally just screw it in just like normal, but it has the vapor and then the insulators, they put their poly, they tape it and then it's done. One cool thing I'll quickly talk about this is if this was a piece of plywood on this wall and you wanted to put your box, let's say right here, you can actually cut off these ears. You can use like a knife and snap it, or you can use um, a hacksaw or a sawzall to cut off the ears. And then you're left with this uh, flange and all you have to do is you just put it, you can trace it. With that trace, you can um, drill two holes in opposite angle, opposite sides. Then you, can, then you can cut that out with your sawzall. And then your box with the ears cut off would actually just slide in and then you can screw in from the front. Um, it's, just, it's such a little powerful box for wherever you wanna put it on plywood and also for your outside walls, okay? You don't wanna use it for your regular boxes because they're expensive. They're like, let's say, let's say this is a $2.50. This is, let's say is like $1, okay? So your price can really add up. One other box I wanna quickly show you because again, when we talked about the single gang box, I just found these boxes. Um, you can see that the ears are different, right? So this is like little short ears, whereas this one has like the long ears. Also, this is for the nails. I told you if, if your company's ever trying to get you to install a single gang box with nails, they're a really cheap company, okay? You always wanna uh, install your boxes with, with screws, okay? They're gonna hold tighter. And what you would do is you would just slide your nail in right here, okay? You just slide your nail in, then you'd hit it into the stud. But again, over time, these become loose with nails. So screws is by far the best, and I usually like to put it into the actual screw hole, not the little slidey one. So. This box, this single gang, and this single gang are like the exact same thing, just different ears, uh, but I would still recommend installing it with screws, not nails. Okay, so let's get into how to drill holes in our roughen, okay? So typically when we are installing wires and when we're gonna be drilling our holes, we use what's called an auger bit. Most companies have an auger bit. Now this is one that goes just into like a, uh, just a little drill. Typically you only want to use a drill for holes that you missed and someone else has like the company drill, okay? So whenever it comes to, comes to drilling your holes, you want to use the company drill as much as you can because drilling is very hard on your, um, on your actual drill, okay? Like, like, so for example, if we're just going to be putting screws in, that's super lightweight on your actual drill, okay? If we are going to be popping tons and tons of holes, like a whole home with this, you're gonna burn out your drill super quick. So typically a company will provide you like a D-handle drill. And I even worked at one company where they have like really, really long handles so that you're able to um, screw up higher like in the joists and stuff. But anyway, so this is called an auger bit, okay? If this ever gets dull, you can actually sharpen them. You can sharpen these the wrong way. So make sure to watch a, tut a tutorial on how to sharpen auger bits. Uh, but an auger bit is super, super powerful. And what makes it so powerful is when it's drilling, it's actually like um, removing like the wood chips as it goes. And another thing when it comes to drilling is if we're gonna be drilling, you want to try to get it as level as possible. Like you can have some up and down, but if you're like way down here and then way up here and way down here, it makes pulling wire way harder at long lengths, okay? So when it comes to drilling, a cool trick I was shown over the years is you wanna kinda of put it on like, your, on like your upper thigh. And if you can kinda of drill on your upper thigh, that's the whole way, then you kinda of know a general um, height of where you want to drill from. So shout out to Bob on that one. Okay, so when it comes to drilling, the first thing to understand is the circuitry, okay? You wanna be thinking about power. Where does power come from? And then 
what box is power like actually going to? When it comes to those situations, the person who's marking out, sometimes they would also even say like, we want power right here. And then from there, then we would jump, you know, everything off of there. So understanding the circuit is really important before you start drilling. That's the number one thing. You look around at all the different boxes, all the different plugs, all the different switches, all the different lights, and you figure out what are the circuits. In this situation, when I was talking to you, I was talking to you more from an apartment and condo situation. And when you are in that workflow, typically a condo usually has at least three or four different styles of units. They might have like a type A, type B, type C, type D. And then that might be like um, one bedroom, a two bedroom, a two bedroom and a den. And then maybe like a three bedroom, depending on how expensive the condo is. And so when it comes to these different styles of units, type A, type B, you have to know how do the circuits work because you kind of get in a routine. Once you go in that room, you know exactly what's going on. And then when you come to drill, everything's kind of the same from floor to floor to floor. Because when it comes to drilling, you want to drill once, okay? And then what happens is you're always gonna forget that one or two holes, like that always happens. And that's where you're gonna be using like a drill like this, right? You just pop that one hole. You don't need to grab the company drill. You just have this drill, boom, and you can continue on. But when you have the company drill, you wanna make the most advantage of it so that you're not burning out your own tools, you're saving money because, hey, when you're an apprentice, even a journeyman, you're like the wage that you're making, buying a new drill every year is very expensive, right? So a, a drill should be lasting you like four or five years. And um, in this case, this is a Milwaukee drill. This video isn't sponsored or anything. This is my own personal drill. What, typically when you do buy a higher end drill, typically the warranty is better. So I've never really broken a drill until um, I got into like my journeyman years. I was a little more aggressive on my drills and I ended up breaking like my chuck twice. Okay. And it was under warranty. They fixed it. So. Typically when you buy a higher end drill, you get better warranty. Uh, you also usually get like a, the metal chuck and the drill itself is more powerful, which means that it's not gonna burn out as easy. Okay, so let's get into actually drilling a couple holes. Uh, again, I'm gonna install the, um, this, this plug. I'll install this plug just a little bit over just to show you uh, how it should kind of look, okay? So usually the first place to start when it comes to drilling our holes is typically from our top plate because the top plate is usually where power is coming from, right? So we leave the panel, goes in like the joists or however you're getting it. Usually it's like in the ceiling, you know, and then it's gonna drop down in our top plates, okay? And so your top plates, you really wanna think about all the wires coming down because what happens is power comes in, but power also leaves from your top plate many times too. So typically, let's say a hole, one hole, let's say three 14 twos, okay? So power in, power out, and then let's also say a switch leg, which goes to a light. So one hole is already full, okay? A lot of times when it comes to um, a door here, uh, you could have a baseboard heater, so a thermostat, so that's another wire. And then again, that could be coming down and up to go somewhere else. So I'm just gonna pop two holes there because I'm for sure gonna use one, but sometimes let's just think, probably use another one if there was a thermostat. We also have a, a double gang here. That'd be like, let's say two switches or something. So let's just go two holes up top. Also, when I am uh, drilling that, um, you know, sometimes you don't want to put it far out in the middle. You kind of, and you also usually don't want it super close either. Just a little bit out. And then uh, when it comes in, you can staple it in nice. And uh, right now I don't have safety glasses on, but uh, usually when it comes to safe, like in this situation, it's kind of, uh, you just don't look at it. <laughs> but usually you should always be having uh, safety glasses on. Okay, so there is two holes in our top plate. And then what's gonna happen is you can see over here, we have a plug. Now typically, okay, in, a, in a, usually a best case scenario, you wanna have your lights and plugs on separate circuits. And that's just usually best practice in a sense that if you blow a circuit on your plugs, the lights still work. Also, if you have some type of heavy, piece of equipment that's plugged into the plugs, usually it won't kind of make like the lights go dim. So what I'm gonna do is we are just going to quickly drill the holes in the studs here. So again, like I said, usually what you wanna do is you want to have it so that, um, like you don't want it to be low, okay? Cause if it's super low, then what's gonna happen is 
um, you know, it's just gonna be really annoying for the box, okay? If it's super low, it's really annoying on the box. If it is too high, um, then the wire has to come down far and you might have to put two staples. So usually you wanna kinda have it, if the box is right here, you probably want it around here, you put one staple on, you get a nice what's called service loop, it comes right into the box, and then your install's done. So I'd probably say about right here, I'd probably say right there is probably like a, a good height for our, um, our plugs in this situation, okay? So when it comes to our holes, we're gonna try and keep them at the same height. And, and this auger bit is dull, so usually it would just break through nice and easy. But again, so if I, I drill about like there, so again, you're just gonna try to keep that same height. And you kind of pull it out as you go. Sometimes I break these, or like, you know, because you, know, so, you don't want it to be sharp on the wire either. The wire is going through there. Um, wood is pretty soft, but again, so again, we're just trying to get this the, the right height. And uh, one more, and then that'll be it. So. Okay, so there you go. So we have, um, from our top plate, we'll come down, which will allow us to access into power. And then if we wanna run a wire back up, we can do that, no problem. Then we can get um, a jumper, or, you know, our power over to another box, or if we wanna go right down to the plug. In this situation, just because of this tutorial, I will just keep the like our lighting and our plugs on the same circuit, but typically best practice is to separate them. Okay, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you how to drill your holes. That's called an auger bit. Um, and so, yeah, we have a hole about here, 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 and here. And so that's a little out. <laughs> this one's a little higher. But yes, yeah, so, but, but generally the whole goal here is to try and get your your height's very similar, otherwise what's gonna happen is you know, your, your holes will be all over the place. And then, like in this case, what well, we have one, two, three studs to go through. Uh, I shouldn't have drilled through this one because it's going here. So I only needed to do one, two, and three, okay? Um, and also, if it's up and down, and like let's say you had quite a long wall to go through, if it's up and down, up and down, up and down, each time it goes up and down is resistance. Like, and we're not talking about um, like Ohm's law resistance and math resistance, like actual like, you know, physics. Like if you're, if you're pulling the, the wire, it's gonna be very, very um, hard on the wire because you, you know, there's always, it's always gonna be rubbing. So you just wanna think that way. And that's it, okay? So we've done quite a lot so far. We've drilled holes, installed some boxes. We will not run anything to here for now. But again, like I said, I'll probably do a little bonus for you guys and share with you how to install wires into a three gang and how to make it look nice, okay? Because this is a big thing for a lot of apprentices. They usually just shove wires in there. All wires are kind of just crossing and everything. I usually always like to have wires nice and organized, nice and neat. And it just makes it so easy for maintenance as well as just knowing what's going on, okay? So that was it for this video, okay? That is how you drill holes, okay? Pretty simple video, but I'm telling you, as an electrician, I used to go whatever, and then uh, shout out to Bob. Bob was just like, hey, you drill them straight, makes it easier to pull your wire. It's the little tricks that, you know, that you get from your journeyman that allow you to really do a lot better as an apprentice, okay? So that's it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Again, if you want to stay updated, check out my free book for apprentice electricians by going to becomingelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. Mm -hmm.